one can start asking all sorts of interesting questions, such as what is a typical behavior of a Turing machine? Is there anything like a typical behavior? How to prove non-universality results? So given a Turing machine, can I prove it is universal or not? How many universal Turing machines there are? How small can they be? How fast they can compute? How can they be implemented and physically realized? Are digital computers uh, Turing machines? Can we do better, faster, more powerful than Turing machines? Each of these questions deserve um, a full lecture by themselves, but let me quickly try to cover a couple of them in the next slides, because it helps make my case to convey the value of the Turing machine model as, so, as some sort of standard, and why, if there is anything, you should, uh, well, rather learn um, in full detail uh, what a Turing machine is, because it is a fundamental concept in theoretical computer science, especially the implications, not the model per se. So let me start by the first question on the behavior of Turing machines. And this is actually a game that some people and even researchers study and play. The, questions, the question that drives the game is to find the Turing machine that given a number of symbols and, and states, so basically given a size of a Turing machine, um, the question is to find the, the Turing machine of that size that takes the longest computer time to hold among all the machines of the same size. A similar question is a machine that prints more ones on its tape among all the machines of the same size. Um, and that Turing machine is called the Busy Beaver, you know, because it looks very busy more than any other machine of the same size. So fixing the number of states and symbols means that the number of Turing machines is finite. So for small states and symbols, one can go almost one by one trying to figure out uh, whether it is a busy beaver machine or not. And some of uh, such machines are known. Here's a table of some of them. But one can see how fast the largest number grows. And more importantly, how fast the number of Turing machines actually grow in order to continue looking for the next busy beaver. Uh, the busy beaver is an example of an uncomputable problem because of the halting problem. You see how it goes. If you were able to find all busy beavers, you would know whether a Turing machine will halt or not, only by looking at its number of states and symbols. But we know already that this is not possible because of the undecidability of the halting problem that we just explored before. And I myself have some have had some fun with uh, the busy beaver and I have a conjecture that I have explored in a couple of papers because I think busy beavers are natural candidates of uh, Turing universality because they are non-trivial Turing machines and as I will explain in the next slide it is quite easy to construct universal Turing machines with a few symbols and, and states. So this is a nice visualization I created also um, in the direction of trying to explain the behavior of Turing machines. And it, this is related to my own research interests. Uh, this this uh, image shows the behavior of a typical finite set of Turing machines for a given number of states and symbols. So each dot that you see on your screen represents a small Turing machine with two states and two symbols of which there are 10,000 if you do the math. Uh, the darker the dot, the longer the machine takes to halt. White dots are machines that never halt, and red dots are the busy beavers. Now, you can see that most Turing machines either never halt or halt very quickly, and only a few do a lot of work and halt. So this gives you an idea of the typical behavior of Turing machine for an empty tape. So most of them, as I was saying, they don't halt, or hold very quickly, and a few of them only behave as a busy beaver. Actually, I won a prize for this image, not only because it shows a slide of the computational universe, but also because it is doing so in a clever way. Each dot is arranged according to a space filling curve called a piano curve that has the advantage to preserve as much as possible in two dimensions the linear distance between Turing machines that are close to each other in an enumeration. 
So this last comment is not very relevant to what I'm saying, uh, but I just wanted to mention it. So another question is how one can find or construct universal Turing machines in general, given a Turing machine, how one proves universality or non-universality. Well, if one can decide whether a machine will always hold or not, then that machine is said to be decidable. In some cases, this is very easy to do. Here, the rule delta sends any input to the halting state zero. So we know that the machine halts for any input and therefore is decidable. If a machine is decidable, then it cannot be universal. However, proofs of universality are much more difficult and a common way to prove that a model is universal is by showing that one can construct a universal machine in that model that emulates a universal Turing machine. So by chaining um, to universal models, one can actually prove the universality of a new model of computation. So if not all Turing machines are universal, which ones and, and which ones, ones are not? Um, this plot with number of states on the x-axis and number of symbols or colors on the y-axis um, shows you um, the state of, of the cur current situation of the knowledge of these um, days concerning uh, universal Turing machines. Uh, and it turns out that with only a few elements of both symbols and states, one can build a universal Turing machine. So Turing's univer origin original universal machine used at least 18 states. But we know today that universal Turing machines can be as small as only five states and two symbols. And under special, even, uh, special circumstances, even with only three symbols, and two states, one can build a universal Turing machine. The precise boundary is yet, yet not completely known, but um, known results are on this plot with every dot showing a machine that is known to be universal and the colored ones are universal in a slightly different way. Uh, but we also know, for example, that there are, there's no universal Turing machines with only two states and two symbols. And actually, Claude Shannon himself, another very famous mathematician um, that invented information theory, theory, he was also interested in, in small Turing machines, and he proved that one can always exchange symbols for states. So there is some sort of nonlinear symmetry among the machines on one side and the other side of the axis. <laughs> 